I see you've stolen the ideas from my battle suit, Superman. Tell me, what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> Welcome to Five Points of Articulation. Summer is here, and I'm celebrating with a slew of special Superman videos all season long. Today I'm kicking things off with a look at the Page Puncher's Ghosts of Krypton Superman by McFarlane Toys. Huge thanks to McFarlane Toys for making this video possible by sending me this guy to review. Starting off with the packaging, and if you saw my Valzad video, you'd know I like this new design. Granted, I'm not the biggest fan of clamshells and do prefer window boxes, but I do think it's clever that they're using the comic book cover as the artwork for the back, and this artwork is really good. My only criticism was that you had to flip the box upside down to see that it's page punchers. As an action figure YouTuber, obviously I keep my fingers on the pulse on all these things so I can pre-order them when they come out, but if I was a parent or a grandparent being sent to Target with a list saying, I want a page punch of Superman, I wouldn't know what I'm looking for. Personally, I think the page punchers logo should be here, with DC Direct filling this spot here. That way, just like with the three inch page punchers, they could adapt this format with other brands. Not the biggest deal in the world, but just like with Val Zod for packaging, I'm giving this Superman four points. Moving on to presentation, and this Superman stands at a particularly statuesque seven and three quarters inches. The first and most noteworthy thing we notice about this figure is that incredible armor, but because those pieces are accessories, I'm going to be going over them during playability. From the top, and remember that smiling, dashing Superman on the cover of the comic book? Well, apparently that was before Brainiac tuned him up. This Superman has a giant gash running down his cheek, and is it just me or is he the the spitting image of Kurt Russell. This Superman shares the same body as the Val Zod that we looked at in the previous video. It's an interesting design covered in all sorts of belts and straps and buckles and studs. The idea of the story is that he's in the Phantom Zone and needs this special suit to give him his powers. In the Val Zod review, I noticed that there was a bit of paint wash in there to bring some of that detail out. Maybe it's because this is a darker blue, but I'm not seeing that here. The paint detail in the logo is nice and vivid though. Same thing with the belt. As previously mentioned, only the front half has been painted. I'm not entirely sure if that's a safe paint or if that's just a design choice. Again, I have heard speculation that they don't have the backs painted so that it doesn't get on the capes. On the subject of the capes, I was a bit critical of this fabric in white because I thought it looked kind of like a paper towel. And while it might not be my favorite fabric in the world, I do think it does look a bit better here in the red. As usual though, they do give you a lot of it. The only uniquely sculpted pieces on this figure are the head we already looked at and the spiky gloved fists. Looking at the cut of the diaphragm, I actually get the impression that they sculpted this over this body. Visually, that does help to make him consistent with other Superman figures we've been given, and also explain the added bulk. As we'll see in playability, this is a very big Blue Boy Scout. While not a traditional design, this is still a very interesting look for Superman with lots of unique sculpted detail. I do think he would have benefited from more painted detail, but I do think that budget went to the accessories. Even so, for presentation, I'm giving this Superman four points. Moving on to posability, and I've already shown you the articulation of this body with Val Zod, but if you missed that video or need a refresher, well, here you go. Naturally, Superman's head is on a dumbbell joint. He can only look up this high, which as a flying character I'd prefer a bit more, but he can really bury that gigantic chin. Really good tilt, and all the way around. Moving down, and Supes can raise his arm 90 degrees. Rotator cuff gets every which way but loose. And then moving down the arm, we've got bicep swivel, double elbow with a surprisingly good bend considering considering how chunky the arms are, and wrist balls that do all the wrist ball things. Moving to the middle, and Superman has a diaphragm joint and a dumbbell waist. He can arch back this far, but only hunch forward this far. No trouble, of course, with tilt, and no trouble with twist. Below the belt, and Superman has the typical McFarlane hips. He can kick about 90 degrees, and split this wide. Very nice amount of twist in the hip, though again, I do think all these straps would have done a nice job of hiding a thigh cut. Moving down, we've got a very solid double knee, toe articulation, and McFarlane Farland ankles that can swivel, hinge, and pivot. For poseability, I'm giving this Superman five points. Moving on to playability, and we have a lot to discuss. First things first, though, and Superman comes with a trading card and a figure stand. Flipping around back, though, and it's just the same write-up that Val Zod had, which is an overview of the Ghost of Krypton story. Being page punchers, of course he comes with a comic. Unlike previous waves where every figure got the same one, now each figure gets its own individual part of a larger story. That is 
exactly what I've been hoping for for a very, very long time. On that subject, I'd also love to see McFarlane give us one of these. With that out of the way, let's talk about the real star of this particular section. This gigantic mechanized armor. Fully assembled and this thing looks wild. When we heard McFarlane Toys was taking over DC, this is the kind of creative madness a lot of us were imagining. This feels like it's straight out of a 90s Spawn toy line. The amount of detail in this armor is staggering, and the shoulder pads have actually been articulated. Not only is it well sculpted, there's also a lot of silver dry brushing. That gives it a far more authentic, chunky metal feel. On this side, Superman has a very nasty, punchy gauntlet, with this side being a glorified meat tenderizer. Additionally, the mask looks like something straight out of Mad Max. That being said, though, how does it look on other Superman figures? Fortunately, the different pieces have left and right scribed in so you know where they go. Keep in mind, though, that you're not going to really be able to use the thigh and cod piece unless you get creative, because they require these holes to plug into. Starting with Action Comics 1000, and admittedly, it's very loose. Don't get me wrong, it looks cool, but you're not actually going to be able to do any playing with it. Naturally, it's a much better fit for figures using the Hush or Rebirth body mold. Still more of a display piece, mind you, but not quite as loose. I particularly like it on Dark Knight's Death Metal. You can't use the mask or the boots with this one, but it's still really cool. If he wasn't already bulky enough, it even works on figures made with the Dark Knight Returns body mold, like the Return of Superman. The limbs are so thick you can't actually fasten them in place, but if this body mold didn't already look like enough of a bruiser, this really takes it over the top. Because of how narrow the limbs are, it's definitely too loose for Earth 2. Still, it does show you just how cool Ghost of Krypton would be if you added a wire cape. Obviously, it's big for page punchers or any figure using that body. Again, though, posed on a shelf, it does still look really cool. But my favorite might just be this Gladiator Superman from War World. Just imagine this guy stepping into the arena. This Superman isn't the only one with crazy armor, though. McFarlane also made a fully armored Val Zod as a Platinum Edition, and were kind enough to send me one as well. Out of the box, and I'm astonished by how much new sculpting went into Val Zod's armor. The mask is the same, as is the cod and thigh piece, but while the dark gray underpiece is reused, the overlay of the chest armor is new, the shoulder pads are new, they've also been given a nice wash to bring all the detail out, the boots are also new, and the gauntlets have been traded out for an axe hand, cool little brainiac skull hidden in there, and also a very menacing claw. Come to think of it, looks like there's a hidden face here too. In fact, I'm just now noticing the hidden face on this shoulder. Underneath the armor, there are a couple of differences. The Platinum Edition doesn't have the paint wash to bring out all the detail, plus he's been given the same spiky gauntlets the cow has. Because of the color scheme, this armor looks particularly good on darker Superman. Here we have the solar suit from Superman and Lois Lane. That S-Shield really pops. It's also a great match for the Snyder Cut version of Henry Cavill. To be honest, the S-Shield is almost identical to the Man of Steel one. Lastly, it's particularly effective on Vampire Superman. Keep in mind that this is the Page Puncher's body, so we can't do much more than just stand there, but all the little skulls and faces make this one particularly creepy. But playability is more than just really awesome armored accessories. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. Starting with Clark's super friends, and here we have a very tiny Rebirth Batman and three Jokers. But for a couple of blue and gray options, here's Nightfall and Hush. Even as big as Hush is, it's no comparison to this Superman. He even dwarfs the Collector Edition Wonder Woman. That said, for a couple of other Wonder Woman options which seem appropriate in this situation, and here we have Last Night on Earth and Dark Knight's Death Metal. Rounding out the team are Rebirth and Flashpoint versions of Barry Allen, as well as JLA Aquaman and Endless Winter Aquaman with Barry Allen's head. Here we have Hal Jordan. Stylistically, the Dawnbreaker 2-pack looks pretty good with this Superman. And then moving from the Justice League to the Superman family, and here we have Steel. This really shows just how tall this Superman is. Next up is the Target exclusive Supergirl, Connell Superboy, and John Kent Superman. For a few Superman villains, and here we have Lex Luthor in his battle armor, Bizarro, a very alive and not at all ghostly General Zod, and Injustice 2 Brainiac, which actually scales pretty well. For a relative scale comparison, here's Superman with Pete to Spidey on the Spectacular Spider-Man, and as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. You will ride eternal, shining in chrome. Having looked at armor swaps, I'm sure a lot of you would like to see some head swaps. First up is Action Comics 1000. This head on this body looks pretty good, at least ways the proportions work. Other way around, and if you want your 
Man of Steel a bit meaner looking, here you go. Though in his defense, I guess if my cheek got gashed, I'd be a bit angry too. Either way, this one balances out pretty well. Here we have Hush. In terms of size, this one is perfectly fine, but the skin tones don't match, so you will need to do some amount of painting. Fortunately, with no other skin showing here, you don't have to worry about that on this one. The head looks good, but does sit a little low. For a long-haired option, and here's a return of Superman, as someone who doesn't love this body, this head actually works pretty well. The skin tones match perfectly, and the proportions are all around just a better fit. Other way around, and this is fine, I think the long hair adds something. For a real tonal shift, and here's DC Classic, I think it goes without saying that this head is way too big for this body. Though hey, that puts it in good company with the hands. Conversely, this head's a bit too small. Also, tonally, I don't know that it's a really good match for this costume. For one that scales surprisingly well, and here's Crisis on Infinite Earths, given that this is a larger body, this larger head pairs very well. Just keep in mind that the colors don't match. Other way around, and this one is interesting. I'm not really a fan of this head sculpt, but I could imagine a story where an older Superman needs a high-tech suit to keep him going. And then for just a few fun options, here's Dark Knight's Death Metal. I have to admit, this looks better than I expected. The skin tones are in a perfect match, but close enough to the naked eye. And overall, this is just a much better sculpted head. That said, the combination of laser eyes and long hair really does add something to this body. Again, not my favorite Superman head, but there's something there. Next up, and here's the solar suit from Superman and Lois Lane. Size-wise, this one's good. The skin tones don't match, though, so if you wanted to make that work, you would need to fix that. Other way around, though, and I really like this one. The beard really adds to this. Next up is Henry Cavill from Justice League, standing just about eye to eye. Proportion-wise, this head's a good fit. And if you ever wondered what it would have been like if Kurt Russell played Superman, well, there you go. On the flip side, I was skeptical of this one, but now that I see it, I really like it. If you were to go in and really paint all those straps and shadows and details, I think this would be something really special. Not accurate to any movie, of course, but still, it would look cool. Here we have Superman's first appearance from Action Comics number one. Not really sure why you'd want to do this one, but you could. Though it doesn't hold up to scrutiny on camera, the skin tones are a fine enough match in normal light. On the flip side, these two were fine proportionately, but if you wanted to make it work, you would need a longer neck peg. Although he's a bit on the small side, I'm very curious about this World of War one. Overall, I like the look of this head, but I do think it's a bit small for this body. Here, the scar on the cheek adds to the gladiator look. If you want to paint it up to match the skin tone of the body, it could work, but I do think it's just a little bit on the big side. Here we have Rebirth Superman from the Ultraman 2 pack. Not to be mean, but just about any head is an improvement over the one that came with this body. I'm really impressed by how perfectly the skin tones match, and the proportions balance out really well. Other way around, and I think we already know the answer to this question. And lastly, Ultraman from the Ultraman 2 pack. This might just be my favorite combination of the bunch. The angry laser eyes really set it over the top. Other way around, and again, the skin tones are a perfect match. And while it might not be comics accurate, that scar does really help to lend credence to this being an evil Superman. Obviously, this is a pretty bold departure for Superman, but I can't pretend it's not a lot of fun. In fact, I really wish that this had been the standard Valzod so that everybody could have enjoyed this armor. Between the accessories and head swap potential, for playability, I'm giving Superman five points. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. This is one of the few times I've felt that a Page Puncher's figure really earned its $25 price tag. Now that we're getting more classic versions of characters, I don't mind wild variations like this. It's not going to be for everyone, but it's a fun display piece and just a lot of fun overall. For price, I'm giving Page Puncher Superman five points, averaging out to a grand total of 4.6 out of 5. What do you think of this wave so far? Sound off in the comments below. While you're down there, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on Superman Summer. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.